on my cycle quite awesome. Uh, assuming this system will let me present. Okay, here we go. Uh, I built a web-based system after trying lots of different third-party apps. I decided, okay, this time tracking thing really useful. So I built a very simple application uh, that I put up on the web. Uh, and it's actually available at Quantified Awesome. You can log into Facebook or Google uh, and, and to take a look at that. That's, that's basically it. it. You know, it has all these other things I've been tracking, like clothes and whatever. But today we're going to focus on time and what I've learned from it. So today I'm talking about data that I uh, that I gathered from uh, November 28 to about March 22. This is the last time I downloaded the spreadsheet, which covers about 480 days, as you can see. People always ask me, how much time does it actually take you to track this time? It really just takes 15 to 30 seconds per, so maybe that's five minutes of tracking per day. And as you will see, it is actually really awesome to have that kind of data. The reason why I did it was because we tell ourselves all sorts of lies when it comes to time. For example, line number one, you know, I really don't get enough sleep, you know, this life is crappy, right? It turns out I get 8.3 hours of sleep per day, so that is not a good excuse for me. Um, most people walk around chronically sleep deprived, you don't even recognize the symptoms anymore, sleep is a wonderful thing. Uh, and it turns out that actually, you know, I, I think I sleep in a, lot, uh, a lot during weekends, but no, even during the week, I managed to get a respectable 7.9 hours of sleep, even on Thursdays, which turned out to be very bad for me. Well, semi-bad for me, apparently. It's only like a couple of hours off. So sleep-wise, I'm actually all right. The next, the other couple of things, the uh, other things that people often complain about in terms of time is, oh, I work too hard. I don't have enough time for hobbies that sort of stuff. Well, when I break things down, again, over the past year plus, um, personal time, so this includes all the time that I spend, uh, you know, uh, eating breakfast, getting ready for things, exercising, all that stuff. It's actually my number one category. Uh, discretionary time, which includes all the hobbies, all the, you know, relaxing, spending time with family and friends, uh, is number two. Business and work-related things, actually just number three. And sleep, as much as I like, uh, as much as I think I spend all my life sleeping, uh, no, actually, it's it's uh, it's pretty much down there. These categories, by the way, are based on uh, OECD categories. So OECD publishes this time study, or they did in 2011. So you can actually compare your numbers with a lot of other developed countries. And I'll actually refer to some of the Can Canadian stats later. So okay, so clearly I don't have a problem with not having a time for hobbies. Uh, mentioned sleep, and if I look at it on a monthly basis, now given the fact that months have different numbers of days, I've shown these numbers as percentages instead. As you can see, I, you know, sleep. I get a lot of sleep, uh, and um, and this is a uh, this is this is work working at a company I was working with IBM before. In February last year, I decided to start my five-year experiment of being completely unhirable. So as you can see, <laughs> work you know takes a nosedive down there, and then business starting my own business starts going up. Uh, personal sin, unpaid work, unpaid work again, household chores, things like that uh, continues. And you, you'll, you'll see that actually sleep wise, it works out to be pretty even except for uh, uh, places, w uh, you know, months when I've got that cold, in which case my sleep goes up, uh, and months when I've got too much work, which means sleep goes down. Uh, this is the weak view of all that data. So uh, again, not too spiky, uh, except for the except for this conference over here, where discretionary travel time went way up, and and at this, uh, I was there as well to spend time with my family, so discretionary social time went way up as well. Um, but yeah, you, you know, basically, you know, maybe this is the you you sleep too little one week, and then you catch up the next week, so you see those little spikes of sleep debt, um, and and yeah, and work and, and all those other good things. Okay. Uh, work is another gift. Again, people complain that hey, they spend too much time working. It turns out I actually only work about 44 hours a week, which is nice. Um, uh, and it, it breaks down to roughly, I do billable work, so consulting, illustration, that sort of thing, for about half the time. And then the rest of the time, I'm learning, I'm connecting with people, and so forth. Uh, this is actually, this, this number was quite surprising for me because when I was consulting at IBM, I think our target was to be 75 or, or higher, like 75% billable or so. And actually, you can, do, you can make a pretty decent living really only working two days a week. Well, no, not really two days a week. This you know, 50% of the time that I spend. Yes, anyway. Um, and then if I look at, the, uh, at how I'm spending that time over the weeks, this is the number of hours uh, 
along the y-axis over here, this is the week, uh, you'll see here how this is me working at IBM, this is me getting ready for starting my own business, work stops over there, I start earning uh, very shortly after doing some consulting, I have some weeks where I'm working a lot, and I have some weeks where I'm like, you know what, forget that, I'm going to cut, cut back a little bit and enjoy life. Uh, which works out very well too, so I definitely recommend it. Then we get to the, the interesting things, and the, the things that, that prevent me again from making excuses about how I spend my time. It turns out that in 2012, uh, you, know, in ter you know, in terms of the, the, the time I have for hobbies and reading and spending time with people, I actually had more than two months of time just for the things that I wanted to do. Which means I have no excuse whatsoever for not learning language or you know, learning a new skill or whatever, because there is time to do that. And despite the fact that I think of myself as an introvert because it's actually very difficult for me to start conversations, I hate going to events and parties and all that stuff, I spend most of the time socializing. <laughs> Which is basically, you know, okay, uh, this is, this is uh, spending time with my husband, spending time with friends. It turns out I do a lot of that. So I, I don't need to feel so bad about the times when I go hide in the corner instead of go, you know, going out to parties because I do go to parties every so often. Uh, and, and this is how it breaks down in terms of percentages in case you're more of a visual learner. So, thank you. Social, actually quite a lot. Uh, this is how it breaks down totally in terms of categories. And as you can see here, I track the time that I spend playing various games separately. So, uh, Final Fantasy is up there, Lego Batman, Lego Lord of the Rings, etc., etc. Uh, which, uh, which is actually quite fun because then I realize, okay, that was actually a good buy because, uh, because I have spent quite a fair bit of time playing Final Fantasy XIII. Uh, so there's and discretionary social again, big category over there. I enjoy writing a lot, uh, and so that's way up there as well. And discretionary Emacs, Emacs being a wonderful text editor that I spend a lot of my time apparently customizing. <laughs> this, if, if I break down just the parts where I spend, you know, in, under my uh, instead of discretionary social or discretionary productive, this is the time that I spend just playing with stuff or uh, enjoying myself. Uh, sorry, this is misclassified. Nonfiction is actually productive work. Relaxing is definitely not quite productive. Um, but as you can see, you know, you have the different games there. <sighs> it's been a while since I played Katamari forever. Mm. <laughs> uh, and this is how it breaks down in terms of time. Uh, Social-wise, I actually go into introvert hibernation modes uh, <laughs> where I don't really spend a lot of time socializing and I get a lot of work done during those times. But, um, but sometimes, you know, okay, there's like, you know, uh, spending time with family, uh, you know, going to various meetups and parties, and then I'm like, okay, it's winter and I don't really want to socialize, so my social thing goes way down again. Uh, so it's, it's kind of interesting to see, you know, my patterns. Productive work, again, this is writing and, and coding and learning how to garden, so gardening is over here. Uh, and then play, this is, this over here is Final Fantasy XIII, <laughs> um, where, uh, where, as you can see, play just went uh, way up. Yes? Um, how do you track the time, like, for trans, or, or tr getting to a meetup, I'd say? Is oh, uh, I usually out? track, so if, if I'm taking my bike, it comes as personal bike, because it's personal exercise. Uh, and then biking, if I'm taking the subway, then I will track that as unpaid work subway, which is basically my category for all things commute related. Okay, so how close do you get to 24 hours? Pretty much all the time, because I track everything. Okay. I basically check into the next activity. I might be a couple of minutes here and there off, uh, but because it's so easy for me to update this through my smartphone or through the web browser, I've, I've got pretty much full coverage. Uh, and unpaid work, I, uh, it turns out I have no reason to complain about how much time it takes me to cook anyway because it, uh, all of this, you know, life maintenance, uh, cooking, uh, uh, like cleaning the house, tidying up, uh, commuting to work because unpaid work, you know, this is, this is part of the stuff that you do uh, that nobody will pay you for. Um, uh, all of that actually really just takes 1.7 hours per day on average over the past so, so many days. Uh, this is 7% of my life versus OECD, this is a Canadian number, 14%, uh, uh, ca Canadians tend to spend 14% of their life on this sort of stuff. Okay. Nice to know. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think it, it's, it was based on uh, time diaries, which of course, you know, don't really know if people are accurate about that, but it was the only number I could find, so uh, I was like, okay, 
Yes, I don't feel too bad about it. I suspect you're the only one in the OECD countries uh, who is actually calculating time. I'm, sh I I'm sure there are probably other <laughs> people sure weirder than I am. So <laughs> <laughs> say, in fact, some people take really detailed uh, time notes, which I'm, I'm going to get to the next steps. One of the interesting things about unpaid work here is it includes <laughs> cooking. And as you can see, we tend to do our cooking in batches. So one day, I might spend about nine hours cooking and then less time cooking the rest of the week. So we have a chest freezer, we fill it up uh, with this marathon session of cooking and afterwards we, you know, we just pull out all these lovely prepared lunches. So it, 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 you know, it's kind of curious. It turns out that we actually don't spend that much time cooking and it's a lot of fun. Um, but yes, yeah, so our, you know, our, our decision to do batch cooking shows up in the data. Hmm. Uh, things I learned. People always say, oh, doesn't, this, this, doesn't tracking time distract you from you know, spending time with your husband or doing things or whatever? Actually, I find that tracking time helps me focus because if I'm clocked into work and then I get this temptation to go off and look at Facebook, I actually go and tell myself, okay, clock out of it. If you're going to do it, clock out of that. Do it, you know, file it as a social. And then when you get back, uh, then it's back to, it's back to work. Uh, so it, it and and then of course uh, the flip side of it is sometimes I say, well I'm currently clocked into uh, into uh, uh, like business building, so I should focus on that first, and then when I get around to when I'm done with that, then I go on to check Facebook. So focusing. The other interesting thing about it is that if you're tracking your time, you realize you actually have more time than you think for various pursuits, interests, hobbies, whatever. And again, it's very easy for us to lie to ourselves, oh, you know, I don't have enough time to spend time with friends or whatever. But if you're tracking your time, you'll, fi you'll figure out that you spend all that time actually watching Buffy the Vampire uh, Slayer uh, episode 2, which I'm not, but like six episodes into, um, instead of spending time with friends. So get rid of those excuses. And, and again, because of that, it allows you to give yourself more room to relax. You're like, oh yeah, actually, you know what? It's, it's very easy to let work get to 60, 70, 80 hours a week without really noticing it. Well, you kind of notice it, but then, you know, there's just a lot of reasons why. But, um, but when you see those numbers, you can be like, okay, maybe there's something wrong here, or maybe I need to scale back, or maybe I need to create more room to relax. So tracking your time helps with that as well. Uh, in terms of the next things I want to learn and I want to try, lately I've started tracking my time estimates and predictions. So for example, if I'm just about to head off to, you know, uh, to take the subway to some place or bike to some place, I'll say, okay, I think I'm going to get there at 11.50. And then I can find out whether I actually made it there by that time or if I'm consistently overestimating or underestimating certain things. Uh, I'm also very curious about, how, about tracking my time to a finer level of detail. I know roughly that uh, my morning routine, which involves getting up, getting dressed, uh, having a fried egg with rice sort of thing takes me about an hour before I, you know, the, from the time that I wake up to the time that I get out of, of the house. Uh, I know that it takes me roughly eight hours of sleep before I can get myself out of bed without using the snooze or the alarm. Um, but it'd be interesting to look at time at finer levels of detail. Exactly how much time, well, how much time on average does it take me to do certain things? And people do track this. Other people who have text files full of timestamps and logs. Uh, so other people do track things, um, and that's something that I'd like to get to someday. But in the meantime, if you would like to see all of my data, which is actually available on the web, uh, you can go to Quantified Awesome, and if you go to Living an Awesome Life, you can browse through my Quantified Self blog posts, and I will answer your questions, because there are probably a lot. Yes? Can you just talk us through the process of tracking? Like what yes, exactly in fact, like? why don't I go ahead and see if my system is still up and Amazing. running. This is the system that I use to track information. As you can see, I'm clocked into Business Quantified Awesome at the moment. Quantified. If I want to say uh, this is uh, Business Connect, I type in a little bit of text or I key it in, in my smartphone and then it tracks it as Business Connect starting from the time. If I realize it's been actually an hour before, like, you know, if I missed something by an hour or so and so many minutes, I can either put in the time or I can say minus one hour or minus 30 minutes some activity. So I can go back and kind of, oh yeah, oops, I forgot the track, well, there it is. So that's the basic idea. Um, and of course I built in little graphs to make it easier for me to make decisions. For example, on this uh, main web page over here, you can see that I, I actually got a just you know a smidge under my regular uh, recommended uh, hours of sleep. So that's eight, seven point nine actually is how much I got sleep today. 
Um, plus other things like clothes and uh, how many items we've got checked out from the library and when the next thing is due. So a generally useful sort of dashboard. In terms of time, uh, there are a couple of other things that I do with it. I've got this, um, you know, graph views and all these other stuff, but that's how I do it. And did you build that all yourself? Uh, yes, over a, you know, like, oh, a little bit here, a little bit there, but you just, it, it, it just accumulates. I started with an Excel spreadsheet, I think it was, or, or like one of those apps in your smartphone, but then it's kind of nice to build your tools. Yeah, and this is something that people can, can use, and some people are using it, which boggles me, but all of that is goodness. Yes. Oh, how do I track stuff? Um, I uh, this is an experiment I tried for a month where I tracked. Uh, y you know how everyone says you you know things should have one place. Um, I'm not very good at that, but I figured okay I can track several things and I can track. Okay, did I just leave my backpack over there? This is because I was always leaving my phone in various places around the house. So this is basically all the stuff. I, oh, uh, now I'm using this to catalog what's in the basement cabinets, which is super helpful because I never look at things again. Um, so six months from now, I'm going to know exactly where the pens are. They are in basement notebook cabinet. Um, and if I need to move something somewhere else, uh, and then I can click on it and I can say it is now actually in this other location. That's how I track stuff. Yes. This is fast. Super lucky that I started with this kind of mid, mid level categories, not just oh, discretionary or sleep or whatever, but, but a little bit of detail. Um, and I find that my categories tend to shift, so sometimes I'm like, oh, okay, personal plan. Oh, wait, I used to call it personal planning. Let's go change that. Uh, but you know, actually, it's pretty really consistent. In terms of, I guess, of your motivation track, so I'm thinking uh, about uh, whether or not someone else would. How, how difficult or, or what uh, support would you put in place to enable someone else to begin tracking? Is this mm -hmm. uh, uh, how, how easy, hard it was for you, whether it develops your motivation to track uh, so consistently all of these activities? It, it actually, I think it gets easier over time because then you're like, oh, I have all this data, I might as well keep it going. You're motivated by um, and I'm motivated by the kinds of questions that I can ask for it. I can ask, for example, so okay, so this decision to go into business for myself, has it been working out in terms of the things that I've been looking at? The more data you have, the more kinds of questions you can ask. I've been tracking my clothes data for more than a year now as well, and being able to say, yeah, actually, these three pieces, I have worn an entire year, it's probably time to donate them. When you start making decisions based on erasing your data, it becomes much more motivating. Yes. Uh, in fact, that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm playing around with, with tracking my time estimates because it, it, turns out, it turns out you you actually do have a pretty good sense of time except perhaps maybe when you're waking up late in the morning. Um, but yeah, it's and it's great to be able to make a prediction, oh, I'm going to arrive there at about 11.30 and you walk in the door at 11.32 and it feels fantastic. <laughs> so yeah, you get a sense of, of how time goes. Instead of actually putting time, time, but just having it's actually easier for me to enter the data in right at that moment, and also that means I get like you know funny impressive numbers like 32 instead of my just guessing 30 minutes. So I, I still prefer to do that instead of saying oh that was probably about 20 minutes of doing this. Um, but uh, but in some cases I'm like yeah actually you know if I don't get to a computer on my phone then I'll go back and say that felt like about 15 minutes and because now I have other. 15 minute chunks to compare it to, I can tell uh, how much I've been able to pack into another day. This okay. Is great. okay. This is great. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome.